Welcome. Um, thank you so much for being here today. We're, we're really excited to uh, talk to you about some, um, some interesting topics specific to the PEGA platform. Uh, but first, um, just some introductions and some, some housekeeping to kick things off with. My name is Michael Hoke, and I am the Director of Business Development for Sky Solutions. Um, I will be moderating today along with some help from Leanne Christopher, our Platform Operations Lead here at Sky Solutions, as well as Hamid Samadani, the PEGA Federal Partner Go-To-Market Executive. We are very excited to be hosting with PEGA. Sky Solutions has been a PEGA partner for well over a decade. And so, so much of what we do for our clients, so many of the solutions that we put together are all built on the PEGA platform. So um, we have a very long history with PEGA. We're very excited about what the future holds with PEGA as well. So uh, for that, we're, we're very excited to be um, speaking to you today jointly uh, to talk about a few things that will be of interest. Just a few bits of housekeeping, as I mentioned. This event is being recorded, so anyone that wants to refer back to something or see something you might have missed, you will have a link to the recording fairly soon after the event ends. We'll get that out to you. Um, I also like to mention that we have a very diverse audience today. Um, we have everyone from practitioners to C-level executives. We have um, great representation from across the federal government, both on the commercial side, I'm, I'm sorry, the commercial side, the civilian side and the DOD side. Um, we actually might have a few commercial folks on and, and that's okay, even though this is federally focused, a lot of the concepts and things we're talking about, about business challenges and what PEGA can do are absolutely applicable um, to the commercial side as well. Um, lastly, um, there, are, there are probably a few other partners like Sky Solutions on the line today, which is great. Um, you know, a lot of the work we do to provide solutions to our federal customers and partners, uh, you know, really does heavily involve a, a teamed approach to making sure we're, we're giving the best possible solutions. So um, just a few comments on that. But um, why are we here today? Um, you know, this event was really inspired by actual conversations that we are having with all of you out there today. Um, conversations that Sky and Peg are having uh, with the folks that we interact with in the federal space every day. Um, we know that you're being inundated with mandates to modernize things, to streamline processes, to fix old and broken legacy processes, um, to become more agile, to be, uh, to be, to be better prepared to adapt to change. Um, and, and, and you know, I think certainly the events that happened over the last year with the pandemic have certainly accelerated all these things in a way like we've never seen before. Um, but um, with that, you know, we also, you might be asking yourself, you know, which direction do I go in to, to fix these things? You know, if I have to, if I'm being asked to modernize a grants management uh, process or some uh, financial backend process that relates to invoicing or accounting, whatever it might be, um, you know, if, am I going to bring in a, a huge team of developers to kind of continue to tinker around with, with my legacy systems, or am I going to look at one of these new low code platforms as a potential solution? And that's what PEGA is, and that's what we're going to be talking about today and what we're so excited about. So uh, with that, why don't we go ahead and move forward and um, get into the rest of the conversation, but just wanted to put that out there as, um, as a backdrop. And so... This ex I saw this come through my Twitter feed a couple of days ago, and I decided to throw this in here at the last minute. It just really resonated with me when I read the title of this article. And um, I just think this should be the mantra for how any of us look at digital transformation, right? Um, you know, as it says, digital transformation is about new business models, not necessarily about the technology, right? And I know everyone on the line today isn't necessarily just sitting there clamoring, thinking about ways to go by um, all kinds of new technology. But I do know that you're sitting there thinking about what we just talked about, about how you have these things you have to fix and accomplish. They're very related to specific business processes. And you are looking for the tools to help to bridge that gap and help you to, to, to get there. And, and we feel very strongly that, um, you know, PEGA, PEGA is, is one of those tools that you should be looking at. So in terms of the focus on the business model and business challenges, um, that's certainly going to underpin our conversation today. So uh, with that, we can continue to move on. Um, and that actually led me to, to this, you know, when you talk about a focus on, on business challenges and complexity, you know, clearly PEGA is aligned to the, the needs of the market. And I love how they say PEGA delivers innovative software that crushes business complexity, right? And as you can see, Sky Solutions, very similar. Um, um, we solve the most complex business process challenges. Um, you know, those are our focal points. And I don't think it's any secret why we've been such great partners uh, over the last several years and working on solutions for uh, the folks that are on the line today. So with that, why don't we go to the next slide and um, go through some of the agenda items today, just 
so everyone has an idea as to uh, what's going to be coming up. So uh, we will go through some introductions of our panelists. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, after that, we'll do a few quick introductions with Sky and Pega uh, separately just so you have a, a better idea as to um, what each company is about. Then we'll roll into some survey questions. We'd love to get feedback from the audience to help guide the conversation today. So we will certainly talk about that. Um, our event topics today uh, will cover the three areas that you see below. Um, and you're gonna hear pieces of these throughout the conversation today and throughout the demo. But first and foremost, um, you're gonna hear a lot about Pega's center out approach to business architecture. This is something that's very unique to Pega and relates back to those items I mentioned above about focusing um, not just on fixing something in your channel, like a, a mobile application or a website or looking to upgrade what are your backend systems, right? Uh, your, um, your databases and your old ERP systems, but a center out approach where you're focusing on the customer and the end user and those micro journeys um, that, that are associated with what those people do. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about that today. And again, very, very unique to Pega. From there, we're gonna go into a demo uh, where um, we're gonna actually show you how we can take a business challenge where we have this idea of how we can fix this thing and build that out in the Pega platform uh, to show you how easy that is and how you can do that with any, any business process that's out there. We're gonna talk about the benefits of low code development. Pega is not just another platform to build something on. The concept of low-code development and what it means for an organization after you start using the functionality and in terms of what um, you know, people who are maybe less technical can start to do um, with that new functionality, I think is something that needs to be understood and, 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 um, and um, brought into the conversation. So we're going to talk about that as well. And if we can get to it, related technologies. We hear a lot about you know, these buzzwords, RPA, machine learning, AI. These are all certainly capabilities that the Pega platform has, but you know, what do those mean in terms of um, uh, what we're gonna be talking about today as well? Um, after that, we will have an open forum with some questions. Uh, we'd love to get those questions answered. Um, you know, there is a chat window and we have folks that are gonna be responding to things in real time. So feel free to do that. But also if there's an opportunity for you to um, speak and ask a question, we'll, we'll have that opportunity at the end as well. Last but not least, I'm gonna share some information on a low code development workshop. So as a follow up to this, anyone out there who sees something they like, they're intrigued, the, the wheels get spinning and you wanna um, take a deeper dive and do some hands on work uh, with the PEGA folks, uh, we do have a low code development workshop uh, scheduled for um, several days from now that I will share some information on, but a great follow up to this where you can kind of take a deeper dive into some specific things. So um, from there, why don't we go ahead and move forward to, uh, our panelists. So as you can see on the screen today, we do have with us Gabe Isco from uh, Pega. Uh, he is gonna be here to run the demo for us. So uh, Gabe, thank you so much for being here today and uh, putting that all together. Excited to show everybody uh, what you come up with. And from the Sky Solutions side, two of our top Pega subject matter experts, we have Driss El Alami that's going to be on the line today uh, talking about some things and our very own Anil Buenapali, who also happens to be Sky's uh, founder and principal. So uh, thank you both for, for being here today. So uh, we can go ahead and move on from there. So real quick, um, Sky Solutions, we are a digital transformation company. Um, I know that's a big word, it means a lot of things, but um, if I can draw your attention to the top, as I already mentioned, in that, in that um, spirit, we do focus on complex business process challenges. And we look at digital transformation that way. Um, every uh, organization, agency, um, you all have things that you're trying to improve. And that, that's what we're focused in on. That's why we're aligned with a platform like Pega because that allows us to create those solutions for our clients. Uh, we do work with the public sector, obviously, but also uh, we have a lot of domain expertise in healthcare, healthcare with healthcare payers, financial services. Um, oftentimes the, the collective knowledge and experience we have comes together with the solutions that we're providing anyone we talk to, because I think it's good to have that broad perspective uh, in terms of everything that's working best out there when we come to the table to talk about things. Um, in the middle, you know, naturally we're doing a lot with digital process automation, a lot low code development, clearly with, with a platform like Pega, robotics process automation and so forth. So um, those, are, those are some of the things we do. Just a few quick points on some of our domain expertise for the federal uh, folks on the line. You know, we're doing a lot with regards to grants management modernization, case management. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, every agency has several and several back-end um, financial processes, accounting, invoicing, all these little things. 
Um, and in addition to the platform expertise, we're doing a lot around those. And we have a very good understanding how to capture those requirements, understand what you want to do and how you want to change, and then build those solutions out on the PEGA platform. So uh, we're doing a lot of that. Last but not least, uh, at the very bottom, just a few items that are rel relevant to the federal folks. We are 8A certified. That just happened uh, only about seven or eight months ago. So we're new to that program. And we are on the GSA Schedule 70. And we are a PEGA Gold partner, something that we're very proud of that uh, took a lot of hard work to get to. So um, without further ado, I want to pass it over to Hamid with PEGA to tell you more about PEGA Systems, uh, our wonderful partner that we're talking with today. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mike, uh, for in inviting us to be with you today. We're very excited. And Mike, I think you did a, a great job of describing the challenges that a, a federal program manager has to deal with, being inundated with requests to transform and modernize and, and, and wondering if a, a low code platform can help. Well, I'm here to say the answer is yes. And Sky and Pega can be your guide. So let's start with Pega. Who is Pega? Um, Pega is a software company based out of Boston, founded in 1983. Our mission uh, boldly stated is to change the way the world builds software. Um, PEG is a pioneer in business process management, case management, uh, which is a space that frankly, um, we, we totally dominate from a market share and analyst rating perspective, have done so for years. Now lately there's a, a lot of buzz on around low code platforms. Now PEG has been a pioneer doing it for a long time, but not just simple, uh, applications, sophisticated, large-scale apps that integrate with legacy systems. Um, for definition, Gartner and Forrester define low-code platform as a, a rapid application development environment that employs visual and declarative techniques instead of programming. And um, one of the benefits of, of that is that it fosters collaboration collaboration between business and IT, where you could literally sit next to each other and develop the application together. At, at PEGA, we call this direct capture of objectives. Another space you see PEGA in is in CRM. Traction has been in customer service. Um, American Express is PEGA. Um, if you're doing business at the Veterans Administration, you're using PEGA to get invoices paid. Um, a few more examples of uh, federal clients, PEGA's federal clients, the 2020 census. If you responded to the census online, you were one of 100 million households who were using PEGA. And if you didn't respond online, the census had 500,000 field workers going door to door with PEGA mobile apps. The IRS recently selected PEGA for its enterprise case management modernization initiative. And recently we had a major launch of Just Grants at the Department of Justice. Um, this is a single unified system for processing all DOJ grants, which was delivered by Sky Solutions. So PEGA supports business process management, case management, uh, low code, rapid app development, customer service, and also robotics and AI using a single unified platform. Uh, we call it our digital transformation architecture, and we believe this differentiates us from our competition because you don't have to stitch together various technologies. You have all of those technologies on a single code base. All right, let's go back to that, those challenges that the federal program manager faces. That's what this should really be about. Um, what I would say to that program manager is that you should focus on where and how you define and operationalize your organization's business logic. And also, as you seek to automate, be adamant on delivering outcomes, end-to-end, start-to-done outcomes. And the way to do that is you, you need a center out architecture. Well, since I've used the word architecture, I think it's time for me to hand the baton over to an architect um, let's ask Driz El uh, Alami from Sky Solutions, uh, who is an architect, to explain center out architecture. But, but before we hand it over to Driz, 
Um, let's ask Leanne Christopher to engage our audience with some poll questions. Thank you, Hamid. And that goes right into asking and getting some a sense of where you are with your perceived customer complexity in trying to achieve those outcomes. So, Yenny, if you could bring the poll questions on screen, just take a moment and read through these and answer them where the UC most fit. I'll read the first question out loud. When adopting a platform solution, where do you find the most perceived customer complexity? And as you've heard from both Mike and Hamid, laid out a lot of the different mistakes and common things that can lag in any kind of project implementation or user adoption. So think about whether it's the front end experience, the back end and how you retrieve data, inefficient processes, and lagging customer response time as some of the choices for question one. And you can answer multiple there. In question two, we're really looking for an answer around if the back end data driven centric setup with how you run your application causes reporting needs and causes those delays. So if you could answer in the, with that in mind, the um, processes are often too embedded with complicated workflows, if that you've experienced that before. If the concept of transformation is something that you're trying to do, but you still kind of divert back to spreadsheets and those other reporting needs. And lastly, if you haven't even explored the topic yet, but you want to get into it today, just answer with the maybe so hmm answer, and just so we can kind of gauge where people are with their voting. Yanni, when it looks like we have enough respondents, you can show the results, please. I know people are still voting. It looks like 27 Great. of 70 people, so we'll give it a Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's see, and um, maybe that's enough time. Maybe, uh, maybe now we'll show the final results for anyone who was able to vote. So it looks like there's an overwhelming majority of the process and efficiencies and really focusing on that customer experience. That's a very good uh, tie-in to what Hamid was discussing about that direct capture of objectives. Sitting side by side is where I hear that being the IT and the business stakeholders involved together. That oftentimes it's not just the front end or the back end that's causing the lag. It's that merge and that hybrid approach of how you adopt configuration and platform usage. So that, that's good telling information there. And for question two, yes, definitely the embedded complicated workflows, tr trying to decouple the business process from the workflow itself is an art in explaining the end result. And we're very fortunate today to see a live demo that goes right into how you can decouple those things and see how it, the art of the possible and how quickly you can have something up and running to be able to show the power of the Pegasus platform. Thank you, Yanni. With that, we will move right into a little more discussion around center art architecture so that we can tee it up nicely for Gabe to show us how it works within Pega. So Driss, take it away. Thank you so much, Leanne. Thank and thank you, Hamid, for eloquently voicing the problems that the federal yes. agencies faces. We would like now to look behind the curtain for the root causes of these problems and the all too common mistakes that we see federal agencies and enterprises engage in when they approach their business architectures and how do we avoid falling into these problems? The first mistake is starting in the channel. That's your mobile application, that's your website, maybe it's your chatbot or traditional contact center type of channel. And when you start in the channel, you end up embedding your business and your process logic directly into each channel, literally hard coding it into every single channel. And this creates all kinds of silos and separations between the channels. If you have ever spent time on a company's website and then you called uh, into the contact center only to find that the poor agent on the other end of the phone had no idea what it was that you were trying to do or what you were doing. And in that case, you have smacked into one of these walls and it makes it really expensive for the enterprise 
they have to code each channel independently. And every time you want to make a change, you have to go and make it in multiple places. So it becomes really expensive and slow to respond to change in customer needs, like the kind of world that we're dealing with it right now. And that's what we call a top-down mistake. The other mistake is starting from the bottom with your systems. With databases, mainframes, and ERP systems, even some modern cloud systems sometimes fall into this because at the end of the day, all of the systems down here at that bottom layer, they're databases effectively. And they're built around products, siloed product, and not the end-to-end -end customer journey. So there is a huge amount of complexity down here. And it's really hard and timely and expensive to try to get this to reflect what the customer journey needs to be. And that's following the poll questions. That's key um, concern that you all had there. A truly customer-centric architecture starts in the center with your customer. And more importantly, it starts with the outcomes that the customer is trying to achieve. And then it captures that journey, or as Pika like to call it, the micro journey, the elements of a larger customer journey that are tied into a specific outcome. So applying for and getting a grant is a micro journey. Resolving a citizen's inquiry is a micro journey. And by starting in the center and working out to your channels and to your systems, you are then able to have a common micro journey that runs across all your channels. So your customer gets a consistent experience. And as an organization, if you want to make a change, you can change the micro journey and have that instantly reflected across your channels and your systems. So to, to summarize, the micro journey wraps around all of the complexity and product centric mess at your system level and provides an easy and efficient experience for your customers and your employees. So a center out business architecture helps you avoid the mistakes of starting in the channels or starting in the systems. And that, it, that way you can deliver incredible results. You might ask yourself, all of this sounds good, Driss, but how is it applied in practice? And we want to answer this question as well today and demo how to approach a center out architecture to resolve a real business use case. I would like now to introduce Gay Bisco from PEGA to create a new grants management process at a high level in a matter of minutes and where we will leverage the center out approach of starting at the micro journey while harnessing the power of the PEGA low code platform functionalities. Okay. Hey, thank you very much, Tris. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to show everybody on the call uh, how you would build a business application uh, using a center out methodology in PEGA. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we are going to start in the PEGA uh, work case flow designer. And this is the main environment in PEGA where you design your uh, process using center out. And it is a visual, visually collaborative environment where uh, developers and business stakeholders can take a look at your business processes and really nail down uh, what it needs to be. So in that spirit, uh, I'm gonna ask for uh, Michael Hoke's help. And together we're gonna design a uh, process for, uh, for applying for and dispersing a, a grant, you know, like you would in a federal organization. So Mike? No, that, that sounds great, Gabe. And yeah, I'll, I'll play the role of a uh, director of, of grants management. And again, in the spirit of thinking of conversations that we're having with all of you out there every day. And also, as we go through this, um, um, I know this is an example and it's one specific thing, but you know, really start thinking about all of the business processes that could be modeled out this way, uh, just to kind of kind of get the wheels turning. But for this, yeah, uh, Gabe, um, you know, I've been asked to to modernize the grants management process at my agency. It's critical. It's a big it's a big mandate this year. Um, why don't we start off with um, building out um, the stages here and maybe start off with sure. uh, create the application, right? As kind of a yep. 
first step. Yeah, that's going to be, be be our first steps. We're going to try to divide the, the work process of a federal grant into high level stages. So these are the phases that we want the grant application process to take. Um, so yeah, what, what is the uh, the first stage of a, of a grant application process? We'll just, we'll say uh, create application. Yeah, so they're gonna be creating the application. Mm -hmm. And this is this is gonna be the person applying for the grant, right? Yeah, yeah. Creating the application. All right, so uh, the next stage uh, in that process. Why don't we do um, grant review, right? And again, this is kind of a simplified version of this process, but just to, to kind of show you how this builds out, but yeah, grant review. Yeah. So mm -hmm. after, after it's applied, someone on the uh, federal side is going to have to review the, the grant that's being applied for. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then um, how about grant approval? Sure. So after it's reviewed, it has to either get an approved or rejection. That makes sense to me. Um, and, and you know these are being done by different people. So so this this represents the work. It doesn't represent the person doing the work. It doesn't represent the the systems or the data that that is doing the work. We're starting in the center with the work itself, and we're going to expand up to our channels and down to our uh, systems. So um, I think. Uh, you want to put another stage in here after it's approved? Yeah, we'll do one more and we'll, we'll call it disbursement. Sure. And this, this is where, you know, we want the, uh, the funds to, to start to manage how the funds reach the applicant. Perfect. So that, that looks pretty good. Um, I think this is, this is a good set of stages. So now that we have our stages in place, uh, the next uh, thing we have to do is add in the individual steps of work that have to take place. So um, now I've, I've done this before with uh, some real world clients. So I'll, I'll try to fill those in a little bit. Um, the first, in the first stage in the create application, we wanna collect some information about the person applying for the grant and then collect some information about the uh, grant itself. So we're gonna use our collect on a, collect information step, and that's gonna ask a user to input information into the system. So we're going to collect user information. We're gonna collect some grant information. And what's great about this is that, you know, as we fill this out, you can see it's very easy to follow, um, even if you're not, uh, you know, digging into a, a workflow or, you know, you're, you don't have to look at code, you know, it. It has everything in a in a list that it's very easy to view, but at the same time, it's using that list to create a business application in the background. So collect grant information, and then for the grant review process, um, we're, we we want the manager to have some feedback, put some notes about uh, what the grant's doing. And that's a and that's something we can automate too, getting that information over to the right person, right? Yeah, exactly. All of all of this is uh, automatable, but it's it's really key that we um, that we have uh, the steps modeled out in the center first, and then we can go and we can start automating. We can start performing analytics on it. Uh, we can start uh, using you know very you know machine learning to determine. Uh, the, the number of cases in the system and, and how they're doing and where we need to improve our process. So one example of that actually is when we have someone who needs to review the grant, we can send them a notification as one of our steps. So this is an automation step. It's when uh, the PEGA platform will actually perform an action automatically. Um, I'm gonna use, you know, we could, there's multiple ways for us to notify somebody. Um, I'm gonna use Pulse. Pulse is our internal chat system on the PEGA platform. So what's really nice about Pulse is it makes a comment section per case. So any stakeholder on the case, anybody interacting with the business process can chat with each other and collaborate with each other. But we could, we could also have done a mobile app notification or, a, or an email or you know, send a text message. Um, Next, we're gonna to move to grant approval. We're gonna keep this one simple with an approve or reject step. So this is simpler. This is similar to a uh, 
collect information step. But instead of just asking for information, uh, PEGA will actually ask a user to either approve, provide an approval or a rejection. And if it's rejected, uh, you'll see it actually created an alternative step down here. But if it's approved, it'll, it'll move on with the workflow. Mm -hmm. So we are going to say approve grant. And then uh, for disbursement, um, I think we're gonna have two more steps uh, for disbursement. We're gonna send an email to the grant applicant we send them kind of almost like a like a receipt or something to, to you know confirmation that um, yeah exactly like so so yeah like the subject of the email will be uh uh your grant was approved okay so this this is telling the the person who applied for the grant that it was approved grant was approved and we'll save that and and since you since you, if they, if they want a receipt, what we should also do actually is we can tell PEGA that we want to create a PDF and that'll attach all the information associated with this case. So all the grant information, all the notes that were created, um, it'll, it'll, it'll create a PDF out of that. And then later we can attach it to this email and kind of send the document to- gotcha. And this, yeah. and what I love about this, so like we just, what we just did there was purely focused on the process, right? Right. And we've mapped that out, which is what we talked about earlier, center out, focus on the process. And then next, it looks like we can now start to associate the personas that would be involved in a particular transaction, right? Yeah. And, and as you develop these processes, you know, you can iterate on them. This is a very simple process, but mm -hmm. it's, it's really great to just start model, modeling out and get started. And you're right, in that vein, moving through the center out, uh, methodology, um, once you have your center in place, you can start thinking about, okay, who's going to interact with this? How are they going to interact with this? And we want to think about our channels and our personas. And now a persona is a type of user that interacts with the business application. Um, and we, I think there are two that are involved in this case. I think the first one is going to be the grant applicant. Mm -hmm. So let me create a grant applicant, give them a nice icon here. I'm just going to call him Sky Pega just to, because it's for this demo. And we're going to say uh, person who applies for the grant. So the grant, what's really interesting about the grant applicant is they're, they're not a member of the organization. So um, part of Pega is we want to administrate work to the appropriate user. It doesn't necessarily have to have to be somebody within the organization that has to perform the work. It can be a customer. It can be a, a user. Uh, it can be somebody from a third party, but we, we can encapsulate whoever they are in a persona. Perfect. So it applies for a grant. And, uh, and how do you want, uh, you, you know, we, so once we create the persona, we, we can start defining what devices they can use and what channels they can use. So Mike, how do you, how do you think, uh, what's the requirement for the for the uh, the grant applicant, how do you want them to apply for a grant? Well, I love it because I know I'm obviously I know that obviously they're going to be able to be online, but um, if if you could eventually show me something maybe on a mobile device, right? Because um, I'm, again, I'm thinking sure. about conversations that I just had this week uh, with with certain folks that talked about it would be great if some of our um, our applicants or I, again other processes I'm talking about, you know, invoicing and things like that for people that are dispersed in rural areas that do have a cell phone. You know, can we get this functionality onto that fairly easy? So if you can show me what that might look like, that'd be that'd be interesting. Sure. Yeah. So let's uh, let's create that right here. Uh, we can create a mobile application right away. I'm going to delete this user portal. I don't think, you know, these so the user portal is like a dedicated web app. I think an external uh, user would wouldn't really use that, but a mobile application sounds great. So we're going to uh, create that mobile application channel. And then, and then the next person would be the person reviewing the grant, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call them grant manager. Okay. So person managing grant. Really simple, you know, this might be multiple people in a real grant management process. Let me call them Skypega just to 
let you know that way you can tell they're part of the demo. Um, so you know there might be multiple people, and you can create multiple personas. We're going to keep it simple for this demo, and I think they are going to use the uh, internet, the dedicated web app, to do this. Perfect. And so these are the personas, and I guess last but not least would be the, well, I guess when you're ready for it, just the data interfaces. And again, I'm thinking about. Yeah. Well, the legacy systems that every organization has and, and, you know, will not be able to get rid of anytime soon that contain so much, in, you know, informative data, whether it's, you know, Oracle or SAP, things like that. But if you could show that last step once it's time, that'd be helpful too. Yep. So that, that is the next part of Center Out is once we've connected to our channels, we have to start thinking about the back end systems that our application is going to interact with. And um, Pega lets us do this really easily in the case workflow designer down here in the data and interfaces section. So, um, you know, it, it's very similar, just like personas encapsulate a type of user. We also uh, take the same approach to backend data. We want to encapsulate the type of data that we're gonna be using. So when we create a data object, uh, I'm gonna create a new one called user accounts because um, you know, we could very easily envision a, uh, an applicant logging into the system and, and, then, and then the application pulling in some information about them from a backend data source. And so we have our data object, uh, mm -hmm. our user account, and then it lists the type of system where it's stored. So by default, um, it'll store the data on Pega's dedicated data backend. Um, that comes with our Pega runtime. But you can see that I can add a lot of different systems. I can add, oh, you, know, there, you know, there's, there's built-in support for, you know, CR, CRM system, a boilerplate CRM, a, uh, a ERP system. Um, you know, you, you, we can also add, you know, any system to this list. This is just kind of what it comes with out of the box. In Pega. That's, that's that's great. Like I said, because I know in my conversations with with our customers, uh, more often than not, we have some legacy system that has to stay, but doesn't quite have the functionality to get us where we want to go. And to see that it's so easy to plug into that data, but then create this functionality here, um, looks looks great. So that's yeah, good to know. Yeah, and and what I see a lot of the time when I'm when I'm building this with uh, with customers is that it's it's really useful to be able to start with a built out model of the data that you're working with. And that way you don't have to wait to get access to the backend system. You can start building your process. You can start uh, figuring out how you want your business application to look like, and then go in and connect it later to uh, a data system and, and you know, kind of go through that authentication process. Perfect, perfect. And so Sweet. we got everything plugged in. Is there yeah. a way to maybe see see what this will look like on the front end? <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. So um, we just wanna do one really quick thing first. So yeah, I think, I think we're done modeling out this process and it's very quick to make a usable business application for this. Um, the first thing I wanna do really quickly is just put some just configure some UI templates so that when we take a look at the business software, it, it shows us something. Um, so let's go ahead and do that really quickly. And, um, you know, you, you can start configuring uh, your UI from the case workflow designer, and that'll keep a consistent experience across every device. And we're going to do that for the first stage really quickly, just to give everybody on the call uh, a preview of what, what it looks like. So we're this gonna go ahead. Like, like grant, you know, grantee name, and then maybe, you know, the next thing would be like what they're what they're trying to apply for. Yeah, I yeah. think so. So yeah, I think we we have it in two different steps. So I think in the first step, which is about collecting user information, we're gonna do their full name. Um, we're also gonna ask for their email. Keep in mind that in the real world, eventually we're gonna have this get pulled automatically from their user account. But for now, we're just going to ask them for it just as a preview. And, um, you know, you can also say whether, you know, this is essentially a forum editor that we'll see in a second. And then uh, you're completely right. In the next step, I think we're going to ask for uh, the reason that they're applying for the grant. And we can use a text paragraph here. 
And I like to make these rich text so that they can do a formal grant write up. Mm -hmm. so we're going to call it grant reason. And then now that that's in there, um, you know, it didn't take very long. But now that it's in there, uh, Pega's already created a business application from this that, that follows, uh, at, least, at least for the first stage, you know, we're, we're ready to see what creating a grant application of Pega is like. So we're going to go over to previewing application. And so this is the Pega application preview, and it's exactly what you're going to see on, um, on, on the business application uh, deployed in the real world. But what's really nice is that you can preview it on any different channel. So I have our uh, mobile preview up. Um, I can approximate the screen size of uh, all, all sorts of different devices. Uh -huh. so you can see how it would look on, on different devices. Um, and then we can also preview it on a tablet and on a desktop as well you know, to see that dedicated web app. But we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what this looks like on the mobile app first. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new application. And right away, you can see the fields that we've already configured. So I'm gonna go ahead and configure and apply for a grant. And it, it was that easy. To, to build a application, so. No, that's that's great. And so, you know, in, in terms of this being that full life cycle demo that we just talked about, I'm thinking of some other questions and uh, this, this might be a good time for the audience too, to start thinking of questions you might have. You know, if, I know I do see one question in the Q&A, which we'll get to, but if other stuff questions, you know, you can start asking there and, and we'll get to them. Um, I have, I have, I have a, a question or two and then address, I know you do too, I'll pass it over, but um, as, as I'm looking at this, um, is there also a way, because I know Pega has this functionality to maybe visualize um, uh, the, the, the workflow and almost the same way you would with Visio or something where you can kind of, um, you know, see it in that format? Yeah, so uh, if we go back to our case designer um, and take a look at our workflow, the, so, you know, having it in this format is really useful for that collaboration and for having it be very human readable. Okay. Um, but if you want the uh, kind of the flow chart view and the, and the logic that that can provide, um, it's also very important for automations. Uh, you can dig into any of your set of steps and you get that view and you can uh, manipulate it. And um, I'm actually gonna manipulate uh, another one down here. So, uh, so you can see that we start at the green circle and end at the red circle. And what's really nice about this is that, um, you know, we have all the same functionality that you would get from any flowchart process. So we can go in and uh, do branching paths, mm -hmm. execute certain steps based on uh, business conditions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that up. I'm not going to enter in a condition just for this demo, but, um, but when we do that and when we have this, uh, this advanced logic, what's really great is that it still maintains what we, what we've done in our view. So all the business users, all, all the stakeholders that are looking at it and collaborating it. It, from from this list view, uh, we can see that decision shape now shows up here. So oh, it, it yeah, it becomes that, kind of self document. That's great. I like how it works both ways so easily. And um, um, I guess maybe my last question, or just a point, and then just I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Um, um, you know, I, we talked about in the very beginning about the benefits of low code development, right? I know it's this buzzword, but is is that essentially what we're seeing here when you're manipulating these fields so easily in terms of low code development? Because Again, I'm thinking about, again, the folks on the line and our, our customers and clients and building this functionality on the Pega platform, but because it's a low code platform, moving forward, you know, you're going to have a situation where people who aren't super technical, who are business folks on the front end, who understand the changing um, requirements and things like that, that are changing the business process and their ability to come in and relatively easy, you know, I know there's, there's a lot more complexity for certain business processes, but to, to augment and change these business processes as needed and to, to, again, because of the center on architecture, have those things reflected across all channels. 
Is, is that essentially what we're looking at here in terms of low code development? Yeah, exactly. And I, I think, you know, one of the things about why, why we push for low code development is it's, it's really about being able to change and, and being able to develop and not worry about code regression and, and bugs popping up. So, um, but yeah, when, when you configure a business process like this from the center, it really is what you see what you, is what you get. So if I were to go in and add another field to the grant uh, information step, like we never asked them for how much money they wanted for the grant. So let's go ahead and add that. Oh, exactly. Just as if, you know, <laughs> like the real thing I said, I have to fix this part of the process. It's as simple as like we're doing now, going back in and augmenting it, right? Yeah. Okay. And, and when, when we build these out in the real world, it is very iterative and we can, uh -huh. we can add and we can add steps and configure forms. But what's really great about that is it's extremely easy to change. So now that we've added that back in there, um, we're gonna go into our application preview. This is what it would look like if we built it out as a web app. Um, so I'm gonna preview that a little bit and we're gonna create an application from the web app. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna apply for another grant. And this time you'll see it's already popped up the, uh, the new field that we've added. Gotcha. So I can ask for 800, excuse me, $800 and, and apply for another grant. Perfect, perfect. Now that's, that's great. Um, Driss, again, you're, you're, one of, you're one of our folks who is on the front lines, uh, working hand in hand with PEGA and our federal clients to create all this cool functionality. Do you, do you have any thoughts or questions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I want to thank you both. Uh, this was excellent. And really, for me, the power of the Pega tool is going from a vision to an actual prototype in a matter of minutes. And that's what we have done here. Um, so one thing here, just to tie it back to what I talked about, we started from the micro journey. And we didn't, add, we didn't start from the mobile application. You didn't come and say, okay, I need a mobile application to build this, but rather how our actors or people that are gonna interact with our system gonna leverage it. And then we thought about, okay, they need a mobile application and that adds in into it. All right, so one cool feature for me uh, that I really like when I'm uh, with my clients is the ability to modify the UI from the actual generated mobile app or the website. If we can showcase that, Gabe, uh, that would be great to our audience and just give them a flavor of that. Sure, yeah. So, um, you know, we, we normally recommend, we always want to try to make the view template from the case workflow designer because uh, that'll keep it consistent across our, all of our channels, but that, that doesn't lock you into, uh, that doesn't really lock you into, um, not being able to go in and configure the view uh, per, per channel. So, mm -hmm. you know, Pega has uh, an architecture that allows you to apply specializations no matter where you are. And one of the cool ways to show that is through our form editor. So we can go ahead and uh, edit any section that we see in you know, whenever we have a section that has any UI that we show to somebody, we can go ahead and edit it directly from the preview. So um, we can add controls, we can add new inputs, and that'll actually change uh, what the UI looks like. So one thing we can do is, you know, if we want to use a different layout for this, I can switch to a two column layout. And, uh, and put that here. Um, you know, I, I can add another uh, control to the to the form. So let's say we wanted to get a deadline for the grant. We can ask for one here. And using a, a date picker. So it's it's very flexible. What what we can uh, how how we can change the the UI wherever we are. That's awesome. This will also, yeah, this will also work in the mobile preview as well. I would like just to add one thing. Um, yes, it is a prototype, but the development team that are gonna make it a full-fledged application, gonna leverage the same thing we have built. They're gonna, it's like building block that you build on top of it. It doesn't, it's not a throwaway prototype. 
um, that you build here. It's the same vision of the product that your development team would have. And, and the cool thing about Pega, we, we, we mentioned uh, the other functionalities that you can add to this, like AI, machine learning, and, uh, and RPA. After you put in your micro journeys and the data you need and who are your actors, those are like this extra Lego blocks of functionality that you can um, integrate with your actual product and Pega on its own. You might leverage certain functionality it wouldn't know even if it was AI because it's seamlessly integrated with the tool and those gives you that edge uh, as functionalities out there and technologies progress, the Pega tool is, itself gets updated with the latest technology. Yeah. And if I could add a little bit to that, yeah. so my experience implementing technologies like that at different customers and in, in different use cases, um, it really all hinges on starting at the center and building out your work process and getting yeah. that all, you know, that all modeled out. Um, because you can't, you can't do the, the machine learning analytics. If you, you don't know, have you, the yeah, building blocks. Yeah. If, right. If you don't, if you don't really know what you're trying to do with your best business application. Hey, I, I know just a time check is that we're going to be getting down to the end here. And there, there is a, an interesting question from the audience. I, I, um, Dress, I don't know if you can see that, but I'll, I'll read it from uh, AFTAP. It says, can you talk briefly about how uh, the PEGA development process assists in the data conversion of legacy data to what is needed by the new user interface. How does this development process assist in creating automated tests? But um, any thoughts on that would be of interest. Yeah, so the way that uh, PEGA works is each case is an object within the, uh, the PEGA system platform and it has its own uh, data associated with it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, there's kind of two parts you know, that, 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 that question kind of goes all the way through center out, right? We have our, our data from our legacy systems, you know, that exists in some backend systems and we want to expose it to users that exists in channels. Um, so, you know, we didn't, we didn't go over it in the demo, but we have uh, a, uh, you know, we have a place in app studio to manage um, how we're connecting to different backend systems and facilitate the rules to retrieve those pieces of data. And what they do is they attach them to a PEGA case and, um, you know, we kind of administrate what data gets attached to the PEGA case, what data gets attached to the piece of work that you're performing. And then once that's in the PEGA case, uh, PEGA will load that data into the RAM of the client, uh, and, and, and expose it to them that way. So it's, it's very performant and it, it's just really about taking exactly the data that you need from your, your backend systems, administrating it through a PEGA case. So you make sure you're not pulling data that you don't need or you don't have access to, or that the user of the business application doesn't have access to, and then exposing it to them in a way that is uh, really accessible and, and, and performs really well. Like perfect. And again, I'm watching the time because we do have a few closing comments, but maybe can you give a maybe a quick answer to this one question that came up that said, can an existing Oracle SQL database be converted into Pega? Is that an easy process? Yes, absolutely. Um, it Now that it, it's a little bit of an IT process. So we recommend, um, you know, getting some IT staff that, you know, know their way around SQL, obviously. But, um, but uh, it, it is easy to do in Pega, and once that's connected, um, and it's exposed as a data object, and that's easy for the business stakeholders to work with. Perfect, perfect. I mean, if, if that needs to be... I'm sorry, Neil, you're saying something? Go ahead. Yeah, if that needs to be retired, right, if that application needs to be retired, if the database needs to be retired, um, Pega allows you to convert that information into the Pega database as well. Uh, so you could use existing assets that like, you know, Gabe has created to be able to convert the data uh, into Pega. So there are various choices that exist. One is converting into Pega, keep data where it is, uh, or like, you know, and then use the data services and other means to integrate with the data. And you could use any of those approaches, which one would fit to your, um, you know, architecture, your roadmap and your vision uh, with the data. Perfect. 
Well, let's let's do this. I know um, you know we're we're running late on time. Um, for anybody else that has remaining questions, we'll try to get those answered in the chat. And we're going to send the questions and answers out to everybody. And certainly, once we're done today, um, continue to send your questions in. We want to be helpful. We want to answer those. So anything that's not getting answered right here live, send those uh, to to us, and we will get those answers to you right away. So. Um, um, let's go back to the main slides. Perfect. And if we could go on uh, just a few more down, uh, we basically just finished our, our open reform uh, QA. So if we could go to the next one to kind of uh, start to close things out. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, for anyone out there who has seen something here, the wheels are turning and you want to do something um, a little bit more hands-on, um, I'm going to send information out about this for you. So don't feel like you have to write all this down. But um, as I mentioned, coming up on Thursday the 8th, at 12 to 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, Gabe is going to run an actual PEGA low code workshop where you'll have an opportunity to go all the way through the process, very hands-on experience and, and a chance to really feel and understand that functionality. Uh, we will make sure we get all this information um, uh, out to everyone uh, as well. Um, additionally, um, you know, certainly for those of you who are thinking about things right now in terms of um, I have some business process challenges or things I'm trying to fix. I, I think I heard something here today that indicates PEGA might be a great option for us. Um, obviously, uh, Sky and PEGA, we are more than happy to spend time with you to talk through that, share what we know. I guarantee you, whatever question you have on your mind about the functionality and what you're trying to do, uh, we have already done somewhere else with one of your peers or we're doing it now currently. And so if nothing else, we can at least provide you that insight and say, yeah, this is what you should be thinking about. These are the questions you should be asking. And um, we're happy to meet with you um, individually for as long as you want, just to, to make sure we, we, we serve as a good resource there as well. So, um, and uh, last but not least, um, yeah, I mean, um, that's, that's gonna bring us down to the end of our, our event today. Um, I just wanna tie everything back to, to the original um, opening on this thing where we talked about a focus on business process challenges, the things that are happening out there uh, in this unique environment we find ourselves in where low code platforms like Pega uh, are providing the unique functionality to not over not only build out these new business processes, but provide and, and give that functionality and kind of democratize development uh, across all of your workers so that they can much more quickly iterate, much more quickly adapt to changing uh, business process needs and changes uh, than perhaps they did before where everything was so reliant on maybe just a team of developers. So um, that's what today is all about. I hope everybody got a lot of value out of this. I will send out some follow-ups after this meeting. And like I said, if you have more questions, send them in so that we can get them back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, thanks again, and everybody have a great rest of the day.